Hey guys, Chris from Adaptivision here. And in this video, I'm going to show you the amended solution for question 1A from the Jan 2018 POE Paper 2. So when I first did the solution to this question back in 2021, I did the balance sheet in order of liquidity as the question required. But for some reason, I just did one section for assets and one section for liabilities. But the question specifically requested a classified balance sheet which is supposed to indicate that they wanted to have classifications such as current and non-current assets and current and non-current liabilities. So when somebody made that comment recently, I thought to myself, you know something, I think I should put out um, an amended solution video. So that's what this is. So let's take a look at the question. Okay, so they're telling us that the following is a list of balances extracted from the ledger accounts of Best Bake, a small pastry shop at its year end 31st December 2017. So they give us this list of balances and we have some assets, some liabilities, and we'll notice that the capital figure is missing. Now what they want us to do, as I mentioned a bit earlier in the video, is to prepare a classified statement of financial position balance sheet. Well, it should say as at 31st December 2017 using the order of liquidity. Now this is the first and only time as of the recording of this video that they specifically asked for a balance sheet statement of financial position in order of liquidity, which means instead of starting with your non-current assets and then doing current assets, and then when you do your current assets, you have stock, debtors, bank, and then cash, you actually start with your current assets and cash as your first item in your balance sheet. So that's what's going to happen here. Now, as I mentioned before in my previous video, uh, the previous time I did this question, sorry, I did order of liquidity, but instead of classifying items as current or non-current, I just had one list of assets and one list of liabilities. So I'm going to pull up my solution now. Of course, don't forget to head up Best Bake, Statement of Financial Position as at 31st December 2017. Now, I'm going to do this balance sheet two ways. The first way I think is the, well, the more helpful way to do it. As we said, they didn't give us capital in the question. So we know to calculate capital, we simply have to do assets minus liabilities. So in my first version of the balance sheet, I am going to do that. I'm going to do my assets minus liabilities equal to net assets and then simply pull that figure down to the capital figures, capital section, sorry. In the second version of the balance sheet, I'm going to do assets or assets only on top equal to capital plus liabilities. And I'm going to show you how to work backwards the figure of the capital figure while maintaining the format. Um, <clears throat> so let's take a look there. So let's pull up first off, of course, our current assets. So like we said, the first current asset is going to be cash in hand. That's $8,000. Next, we're going to put in the bank figure, which is $17,000. And I believe we also have some prepaid expenses right below the bank figure of $4,000 there. Then we have accounts receivable. Now, we don't have any provision for bad debts or anything like that. So we're just going to plug in the $22,000 for account receivable. And of course, finish off with inventories as it's the least liquid or most permanent current asset. We're going to take a subtotal for that section and then go to the non-current asset section. So we have a few. We have buildings at book value. Then we have motor vehicles at book value as well as machinery at book value. So we're going to put the motor vehicles, then the machinery, then the buildings and take a subtotal. Now, if, if of course you think that motor vehicles is more, is sorry, machinery is more liquid or less permanent than motor vehicles, of course, you're free to have that opinion. I would say buildings is definitely the most permanent, okay? So we have our two subtotals for our two types of assets. We're going to, of course, take a total four assets there. And then we're going to start with the current liabilities. So we have a few. We have accounts payable. We have a loan payable 2018. Now, the reason that that is a current liability is because the balance sheet date is December 31st, 2017. So anytime during 2018 is going to be one, within one year from the balance sheet date, which makes this loan a current liability. Right, and we also have wages owing, so that's an accrued expense, which we know is a current liability. So we're going to put in those three items, take a subtotal, and do some do the section, sorry, for non-current liabilities, which of which we have one bank loan twenty twenty five, which of course is repayable more than one year from now. So we're going to put in that one non-current liability two seventy five, add those two figures together to get total liabilities, and then subtract three sixty seven from five thirty five. Assets of 535 minus liabilities of 6, 367, sorry, and that gives us net assets. And now all we have to do, of course, is to say finance by capital, put that figure and put, a sub, well, put the total for that section. Right? Of course, you don't have to have a total per se, you can just double line this figure, but I have kind of gotten to prefer showing a total even though there's only one item here. 
Okay, so as I said, I kind of prefer this particular format because they did not give us the capital figure in the balance sheet. Sorry, in the, in the question, sorry. So to figure out capital is assets minus liabilities. But I know some of you all, you all, you all have been trained to do assets on top and capital plus liabilities below. So we are gonna take a look at that item now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do just for the sake of comparison is to put the balance sheet we just did on the left-hand side of the screen, and I'm gonna do the, well, it's not a new balance sheet, but the different presentation of the balance sheet on the right-hand side of the screen. And you'll see that there is a bit of a difference in terms of the presentation, but the content remains the same. We're just communicating slightly differently. So again, order of liquidity. So again, don't forget to head up. I'm going to start with the current assets first. So I'm not going to go through it step by step as I did previously. I'm just going to populate the items because we just did this. So we don't need to go over it unnecessarily. But I will say that we will put the assets alone on top. And we're going to stop the top half of the balance sheet there. So assets are the resources of the business. It's what we, they are what we use to engage in business activity, earn revenue, and ultimately profit. Where do the resources come from? Well, we have to buy them. Where does the money to buy them come from? Well, either the owner via capital or equity capital, or from entities other than the owner, creditors via liabilities or debt capital. So that's what we have to put here, right? Remember what a balance sheet is. It shows the assets or resources of a business and how those assets were financed, where the money to buy those resources came from. So we're going to start with the current liabilities because again, it's order of liquidity. So the least permanent items first going down to the most permanent. So current liabilities, as we saw, we only had a few items there. Subtotal, we had one non-current liability. We're going to put total liabilities. Now, don't forget, we didn't, let, let's assume we didn't do the first balance sheet that we just did. That you guys went straight to this format in the exam. So of course, you could come to this section and we know the total here is supposed to match the total here. And we're missing the capital figure. All we have to do, therefore, is take the 535 minus the 367, and we're going to get capital balance. And you'll see a little work in there, 535 minus 367. And again, your, your balance sheet balances, right? And that's it for this amendment. <laughs> okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the amendment that I wanted to show you how to properly classify the sections of the statement of financial position when done in order of liquidity. Now, there were other parts of this question I'm not going to do in this video. I am going to put a link, sorry, a card to that video up here somewhere. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and check out my website for some few ways it might find useful. Anyhow guys, thanks again for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.